This episode was originally released as a bonus episode of Real English Radio and is now being released to the public. Enjoy. A while back, I saw a video on TikTok of this elderly couple talking about things that help them maintain a healthy relationship. Unfortunately, I didn't save the video, so I can't play it now, but I remember them describing a scenario in which a couple is sitting at home on a Saturday afternoon. They're both seated on the couch next to a window, and the TV is on. One partner is scrolling on their phone, not really paying attention to the TV, and the other partner is looking out the window. Now, the partner looking out the window sees a beautiful blue bird sitting on a tree next to their house and says, Oh, honey, look at that beautiful blue bird. The other partner never stopped scrolling, nor lifted their head. They completely ignored what they heard. Now, I'm sure you can imagine how you would feel if you were the partner looking out the window. And so the couple from the TikTok video go on to speak about this concept called emotional birds, which I later found out is officially referred to as emotional bids. And I think the couple might have just been playing with words when they changed it to birds. Now, the psychologist John Gottman coined the term emotional bid to describe any attempt by one partner to establish connection, attention, or affection from the other. Now, the word bid has several meanings depending on the context. In general, a bid can refer to an offer or a proposal. And this is often used in the context of auctions or business transactions where someone makes a formal offer to buy or sell something at a certain price. It can also refer to an attempt or an effort. And this usage is common in sports or competitive contexts where a bid refers to an attempt to achieve something or to win. It can also refer to a request or an invitation. And in this sense, a bid is a formal request for someone to do something or to participate in something. So in the context of an emotional bid, the meaning aligns more closely with the third definition. An emotional bid refers to a subtle or overt attempt made by one person to connect with another emotionally, typically through communication or behavior. This bid could involve gestures, expressions, statements, or actions that express a need for attention, affection, support, or understanding. For instance, in a relationship, one partner might share a personal story, or express a vulnerability, or seek validation in conversation, hoping for empathy or support from the other partner. This is an example of an emotional bid, as it seeks to establish or strengthen the emotional connection between individuals. The example of one partner pointing out a beautiful bird to share a moment and the other partner not responding is an illustration of a failed bid for emotional connection. Now, Gottman's theory categorizes the potential responses to these bids in three ways. Number one, turning towards, responding positively to the bid, right? Acknowledging the partner's need for connection. Now, this would be if the other partner looked at the bird and engaged in a brief conversation about it. So when the first partner says, oh, look at that beautiful blue bird, the second partner might say something like, oh, wow, it's such a deep blue. Man, the beauty that nature can produce is incredible. That would be turning towards your partner when they make an emotional bid. The second potential response is turning away, ignoring the bid or not acknowledging it which is what the second partner actually did in the story, right? And this is often seen as a form of rejection or neglect, whether or not it's intended in that way. That's often how it's felt and seen. That's turning away from your partner. And the third potential response is turning against, responding negatively, such as with annoyance or some kind of dismissive remark. So when the partner says, oh, look at that beautiful blue bird, the second partner might say something like, what? I don't care about a stupid bird. So you see, they're annoyed. They're like, why the fuck are you wasting my time with this stupid shit? That's turning against your partner when they make an emotional bid. And according to Gottman's research, the way partners respond to each other's emotional bids plays a crucial role in the health and longevity of relationships. Positive responses help to build trust and intimacy 
while negative responses can lead to feelings of loneliness and disconnection. And there are some important things to consider when we think about this topic. For example, the importance of attention in relationships. As the example of the couple highlights the significance of paying attention to one another in maintaining a healthy relationship. It prompts us to reflect on how often we truly listen and engage with our partners, especially in those seemingly mundane or unimportant moments. The scenario of one partner being absorbed in their phone while the other one seeks connection suggests a common issue in modern relationships, technology's interference with interpersonal connection. And this can open up discussions on how excessive screen time can hinder emotional intimacy and also the strategies that couples can employ to balance technology use with quality time together. And it's not just romantic relationships, right? It could be your best friend. It could be your mom. It could be your children, you know? Stopping to think about how often we actually pay attention to the people in our lives, how often we're actually giving them our undivided attention. I think it was episode 18 that I talked about that, the stupid shit that we do to ruin our conversations. And one of those things is not giving people our undivided attention. It's a huge problem. And it really does keep you from connecting with people because obviously, like I've said many times on the podcast, nobody likes being ignored. Nobody likes being disrespected. Nobody likes when somebody that they love turns against them, you know? Nobody likes feeling unimportant, especially to the people who are important to us, right? Nobody likes that. So by stopping to think about this, I think we can begin to appreciate how important attention actually is and how our attention or lack thereof is making our partners feel, especially in those small moments, right? Because it's often the seemingly unimportant the seemingly small interactions. For example, like noticing a beautiful bird just outside of your house. It's those seemingly small moments that make all the difference, right? It's the small things. It's not always the big, you know, memorable, super important stuff. That has weight, it has importance, but in the day-to-day, you're not experiencing life-changing stuff every single day, are you? Are you having life-changing conversations every day with your partner? No. You're having normal conversations, daily conversations. And there are tons of little things that we just let pass by because we're not paying attention or we can't be bothered. We don't care enough when it really makes a difference. And again, not just with romantic partners. Maybe you have children. This is a simple yet universal example. Maybe you have some children. You've been working all fucking day. You work 10 hours. You fight traffic to come home. You still got more work to do once you get home. You get home, you go straight to your office, open up your computer, and you work for three hours straight. After those three hours of working, you still haven't solved this problem that you have. And one of your kids comes walking into your office and asks a simple question. Or has a ball and wants to play a game with you or whatever. And you might respond, but can't you see I'm working? What do you want? I'm trying to focus. You know you shouldn't come in here when I'm working. I told you that before. Right? You turn against them when they're just making an emotional bid. They just want some attention. And you think them wanting to play football or basketball for five minutes is stupid. It's insignificant when you have all this work to do. This important pressing work needs to be done now. And you don't realize that that small moment where you turn against your child when all they want is a little bit of attention. All you've done is hurt their feelings and you've taught them that they shouldn't come to you when they want a little bit of affection or attention. I shouldn't bother dad. I shouldn't speak to dad. I need to leave dad alone. That's all you're doing. And it's something so small that's so easy to miss. But so many of us do shit like that all the time. Because we're so self-obsessed. We're so focused on ourselves and our problems and our feelings and our thoughts and experience that sometimes we just forget to slow down. And consider the people in our lives, consider the people that we're interacting with and how we're making them feel or how we're communicating with them, the way we treat them. It's the small stuff, bro. The small stuff. Or after the same shit, after a long day of work, you work fucking eight hour shift, two hours in traffic. You got a fucking asshole of a boss. You don't like your coworkers. It's just, it was a shitty day, bro. It's a shitty day. You come home and boom, you plop down on the couch 
just exhausted. You don't want to think. You don't want to do nothing. And like clockwork, your girl comes out the room, sits next to you on the couch, and just runs her hand down the back of your neck, starts scratching your back, gives you a soft kiss on the cheek. How was your day? You know, you want to talk about it? Just, it seems so small, so insignificant. But fellas listening to this, I know y'all know. Or even if you don't know what that feels like, maybe you've never had somebody do that for you. But I'm sure you get... Or you can imagine how fucking good that would feel. And it's something so simple that anybody can do. But in many partnerships, little things like that just aren't done because people aren't being attentive to their partner's needs. They're not communicating effectively enough. They don't know how to express what they need. Or when they express what they need, the other partner turns away from or turns against the person who is expressing what they need. It happens all the time, bro. So I think... Taking time to, to consider those small moments can have a huge effect on your relationships. And this theory, John Gottman's theory of emotional bids, what it does is it gives us a framework for understanding communication patterns in relationships. Exploring how individuals respond to each other's bids, whether it's by turning towards, turning away, or turning against can provide insight into the dynamics of communication within any relationship and help you identify what areas of your communication skills you need to improve. Because again, you maybe just never thought about it. You never thought about how you're communicating with the people closest to you. Your wife, your kids, your parents, your brothers and sisters, your best friends, whoever it may be. So by thinking about communication in this way, am I turning towards? Am I turning away from? Am I turning against? these people, by stopping to consider that and think about communication in that way, you might realize, damn, every time my partner mentions something that she needs, I turn against her. I'm never supportive. I never acknowledge what she needs from me. Every time my child comes to me, I turn away from them. I always just keep looking at my phone. I always diminish whatever it is they're talking about. I always minimize their feelings. I always make it about me. So by thinking about it, with this framework, you might be able to identify the things that you're doing to ruin conversations, to hurt the people closest to you, to destroy your own relationships, and make those changes. And I'm sure you know by now, that's what this podcast is about. I just want you to think, bro. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just asking you to think. And think about important shit like this, you know what I'm saying? And what's also interesting is when you think in this way, when you think about communication this deeply and with frameworks like these, you can start to cultivate emotional intelligence, which is kind of an oxymoron, emotional and intelligent. Those, <laughs> they're kind of like uh, contradicting terms, if you ask me. But humans are walking contradictions, right? We're all oxymorons. And so what I'm saying is I think you need a certain level of emotional intelligence to be able to deal with all different kinds of people, to communicate in different ways, to respond to people's emotional bids. And so by focusing on this and trying to improve that skill, you will become more emotionally intelligent. And when you're more emotionally intelligent, you're more of a pleasure to speak with. When you're listening attentively, when you're remembering small details about people, when you're asking questions instead of making judgments, when you're validating the things that people say, this is also very important. I think that validation has become something like a dirty word because of people's behavior on the internet, on social media and shit. Say, like, oh, these, these people are going online looking for validation from strangers and blah, blah, blah. It's become a neg The word has become negative. Everybody's looking for validation. But we can't ignore the fact that the desire for validation is a fundamental human desire. All these companies online have done is weaponized the natural human desire for validation. I think that's why social media is so popular, because so many of us are not getting validation in our daily lives from the people closest to us, if we have anybody close to us. And so we just go online and look for it. And if we don't get it, then we're mad and jealous and envious, and we try to fucking shit on other people who are getting validation, you know? Which is a different, a completely different subject. I don't want to get off track. I'm just saying that we can't deny the fact that desire for validation is, is natural. All of us have that desire, whether we want to admit that or not. And so if you can give that to people in real life, if you develop your emotional intelligence, you learn how to listen and validate other people, make them feel seen and understood 
and heard. You will be a pleasure to talk to. You will build trust and intimacy with the people in your life. Because once people see that you, you don't have any desire to judge them or criticize them or tear them down or diminish them or disrespect them or condescend to them or make assumptions about them, they will tell you all kinds of shit just because they know you're curious and you're actually listening. You're actually paying attention. You are truly engaged. You're not on your phone. You're not cutting them off when they speak. You're not making assumptions or critiques about anything that they're saying. You just want to learn more. What is it like to be you? Where are you from? How do you see this topic? How did you arrive at that conclusion? Here's what I think. What do you think about that? Shit like that. I cannot stress enough the importance of this, bro. I cannot stress it enough. So many reasons to listen attentively, to be curious, to develop your emotional intelligence. These are just a few, you know? And I'm curious to know what y'all think about this topic. Emotional bids, emotional birds. Is this something that you've thought about before? And maybe once you think about it more deeply, what are some things that you know you could improve about the way you communicate? What do you think about the people in your life? How do they communicate with you? The people closest to you, are they turning towards, away from, or against you? It's just interesting to think about, man. It's probably the most common topic on this podcast is communication, and it probably always will be because it's so fucking important, man. It's so important. So that's what I got for you today, man. Let that sit on your brain. Let it process. Let it marinate a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget, write in your journal. Use the vocabulary from this episode. Use the phrases and expressions. Develop your own thoughts about this topic. Talk about it with real people, man. I cannot stress how important that is when trying to learn and improve your ability to communicate in English. All right, but that's what I got for you today, my friend. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed yet another episode of Real English Radio. I'm your host, Tony Kaizen, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.